pots. There's a lot to talk about here, like size, shape, color, materials, cost, and reusability. I'll try and touch on all of these points in a little bit more, but first, why pots? The obvious benefit, of course, is plant portability. The ability to adjust the position of your plants as you grow can be really useful, especially indoors under grow lights. And also, if one plant gets sick, like me, or just isn't doing well, it can easily be taken out. <laughs> the wrong type of pot, of course, can cause problems, though. Old school plastic pots encourage roots to circle around the edges. If plants are left too long, they become pot bound, and then these outer roots are really susceptible to heat damage and disease, especially if the pots are made from thin black plastic. If you prefer the sturdiness and reusability of plastic, check out Grow Pro's range, including some of the special anti spiraling designs available in square or round shapes. They also make some awesome injection molded, heavy duty plastic square pots, too. Available in black or my favorite, white. Shows up the dirt more, though. Ha! <laughs> I've been using the same ones for four years now, and they really are a great investment. Sizing is important. Seedlings and cuttings should be started off in plugs or cell trays and then transplanted to nursery pots. From there, most folks go to a one gallon and then a two or three gallon. For larger indoor plants, some growers then transplant to five gallons. The key with timing your transplants is to wait until your plants need irrigating every day. They should have totally exploited the media available to them and then be transplanted into something around two or three times larger. As for pot shape, some folks will tell you that a taller pot gives you a taller plant and a squatter wider pot encourages lower squatter plants. Actually, uh, no, it's a myth. Your choice of growing media and overall pot volume are far more important than the shape of your pot. Look at it like this. When you top feed, gravity pulls the nutrient solution down through the media and eventually out through the drainage holes at the bottom. Restrictive growing media like stone wool or coco coir inevitably traps some of the nutrient solution on its way down. There is more gravitational potential at the top of the container than at the bottom. At the point where the adhesive force of your growing media is greater than the downward force of gravity, a sort of water line occurs. For any given growing media, this line is at the same height no matter whether your container is tall and thin or short and wide. So it's really a question of the proportion of growing media that sits above and below this line. Obviously, taller thinner pots have a smaller proportion of media in the wet zone than low wide containers. Some growers add hydrogen clay balls to the bottom of the pots in an effort to increase drainage. Again, another widely circulated myth. Actually, all they're doing is raising the water line in the pot, not increasing actual drainage. So you probably already know that I'm a big fan of fabric pots, not least because they help to mitigate the problems of overwatering. Roots enjoy more oxygen through the breathable material and don't circle around the edge of the pot becoming heat stressed as a result. One important note about fabric pots. Transplanting from one size to another can be a real pain because the roots actually grow into the fabric and you literally have to tear the root ball out from the pot. Not good. For this reason, some growers choose fabric just for the final stage, preferring plastic for their intermediate stages. Alternatively, you can choose a fabric pot with a thinner gauge fabric, such as Grow Pro Essentials, and plant the whole pot up. They also have some square designs which are awesome, but don't be tempted to cram them together too much as the plants really benefit from the air circulation around the pots. You can also raise them up too using these next level pot elevators so air can get underneath to remember pots sat in puddles equals root rot whereas air pruned roots equal more root hairs and nutrient uptake hooray one more important point though is plants grown in fabric pots need to be irrigated more often but this is a good thing as it's basically tantamount to more meals over the life cycle i think five gallons is the maximum you'll need if you're growing short cycle annuals and soilless mixes sure a 10 gallon pot will in theory support a larger plant but the real question is can you light the resulting beast efficiently using only grow lights to full maturity and harvest hmm, also consider your floor space and the cost of all that growing media on the other hand for soil growers a 7-gallon pot, okay, even a 10, might work better for you. Again, depending on the final plant size, as more soil gives a larger reservoir of nutrition. Finally, net pots and mesh pots are ideal for plants that are going to be transplanted into a larger hydroponic system as they allow the roots to burst out and exploit all the additional media and nutrients around them. Okay, I'll stop there. I missed out on root trapping pots, but they deserve their own feature. Don't forget to comment below if you have any questions or if you'd like me to delve deeper. Oh, and if you have any interesting pot-related experiences you'd like to share, then don't hold back. I love hearing from you. And even more so when it's a new subscriber notification pinging into my inbox. Hint, hint, come on, it's free and immensely encouraging. All right, a big manly kiss to all of you who have hit that big red button already. This is Everest, risking vocal nodes and struggling through laryngitis for your growing pleasure. Until next time, amigos, out.